Game of Thrones is a very popular show on television. Its success led to an offshoot known as House of the Dragon. It essentially tells the classic human story of elite individuals from various kingdoms and principalities vying for power. Even though it's fanciful in nature, it takes inspiration from human history in general. The continent of Africa was no stranger to this genre of historical events, the most relevant perhaps being the so-called Ethiopian Age of Princes. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. On Patreon, you can find more in-depth courses on African history. Also, your support helps the channel grow, improving production quality and future animated projects. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. OBT Social is black owned and operated, and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can visit the website at obtsocial.com. Links to OBT Social and Patreon are in the description box below. Admittedly, I've never watched Game of Thrones, but I have seen House of the Dragon. Observing the world building behind both these episodic shows reminded me of a period in time called the Age of Princes in Ethiopian history. But before we begin, Try to take this video more lightheartedly. It's not intended to delineate the similarities between a TV show and Ethiopian history, or to make claims that those shows were inspired somehow by historical African events. The Game of Thrones universe simply reminded me, as mentioned before, of this period in Ethiopian history. Please keep that in mind. So what are some noteworthy examples in African history that reflect powerful elites competing for central authority in a given region? Despite there being many, for me, personally, there are three that stand out. These include the various Libyan kings and princes before the consolidation of 25th dynasty Egypt, the numerous events of the Congo Empire, and finally, the so-called Age of Princes in Ethiopia. The Third Intermediate Period, as it's called, was an era of fragmentation for Egypt. Libyan lords attempted to consolidate their rule over Egypt, some having more success than others. It wasn't until the arrival of Nubians under King Payanki that some semblance of central authority over Egypt began. In Central Africa, the Bakongo kings of the Congo Empire had to deal with the Portuguese, a powerful militaristic African group known as the Mbengala and the increasingly independent state of Soyo. Perhaps the most similar in character to the Game of Thrones universe, if you will, is what Ethiopian historians call the Zamana Masafint, or the Age of Princes. So what was the Age of Princes? Most historical sources would tell you the Age of Princes began in the 18th century, but an argument can be made that it actually began a century earlier. Before 1636, the Salomonic Ethiopian dynasty seldom had a fixed capital. Salomonic rulers would occasionally move their capital all throughout the empire. In the 17th century, Fasilidas stopped this tradition and formed a fixed capital at Gondor. And according to Christopher Eret, in doing so, Fasilidas inadvertently wrote off the old southern territories of the kingdom, and by establishing a fixed capital, he lost for future kings the ability to keep a tight rein on distant provinces. No longer could a king bring to bear the threat of moving the whole court and the army into such a region. This began an era called by Ethiopian historians the Era of Princes, in which the great regional lords of the Salomonic Kingdom became increasingly autonomous rulers and feudal decentralization set in with a vengeance. This event set the stage in which the era of princes was to flourish, and in 1769, the African Game of Thrones truly began. Local warlords and various princes competed for supremacy, the most salient among them being Ras Mikhail Sahu, the governor of the Tigray province. The Solomonic Emperor at Gundar called on Mikhail Sahu to help defeat an incursion of the Muslim Oromo people. Mikhail Suhul not only assisted the emperor, 
but he helped himself to the Salamanca court, proclaiming the title of regent. He was a power player behind the scenes, but also in plain sight, as he orchestrated the assassination of two Salamanic emperors. The chess he was playing allowed him to choose the next emperor in which he controlled in full. Power in Gundar continued to go downhill from there, and the various princes fought constantly. During the heyday of the Zamana Masafin, the princes running their autonomous regions were subject to raids from other warlords who coveted an additional realm. During that time, many peasants stopped farming the land. Unpaid soldiers and shiftas made their normal life very difficult. There was a continuous civil war and a series of bloody conflicts, such that as many as six rival emperors claimed a Solomonic throne in 1800. From the perspective of warring princes, the capital of Gundar at this point was merely an unoccupied seat of power waiting for the real emperor to lay claim and consolidate his rule. Although in contrast to the Game of Thrones universe, the era of princes dealt with vanquished foes in a non-traditional fashion, a manner that befuddled European observers. A French explorer entrepreneur who lived in Ethiopia from 1838 to 1848 and took part in a number of battles during the Zamana Masafint was unable to comprehend what he saw at the conclusion of battles. In his memoir, he describes a virtual celebrative reunion of cousins fighting on opposite sides, and from the Abadis' European perspective, the lack of fear on the part of the vanquished soldiers. Others noted similar occurrences. To an extent, the enduring warfare during the Zamana Masafint may be attributable to the ways wars were concluded more than to who won the wars. In short, the benevolence shown to the vanquished contender may have actually prolonged the feudal wars of the 18th and 19th centuries. Right or wrong, this is eerily similar to how some Nubian kings of the 25th dynasty exhibited forgiveness and political rehabilitation for their enemies. Like King Payanki before him minus the benevolence, King Tawodros II finally ended the era of princes beginning the process of bringing most of Ethiopia under one central authority. In 1853, Kasa Hailu, later crowned to Wodris II, conquered Ali Alula and put an end to the age of princes. Although his rule was met with a certain amount of instability, to Wodros II is credited with consolidating the empire and paving the way for the elimination of the feudal system that destroyed the Christian empire and its monarchy in the first place. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.